When working with TypeScript, we often have types looking like this. We have a base type and then subtypes extending from this base type. And after that, we create a union from these subtypes to use later. While this looks fine at first, we can get some real issues by using this approach. Because when we create an object using the union of these subtypes, we are not restricted to only use one of the subtypes of the union type, but we are allowed to add properties from the other subtypes in the union too. And while sometimes this is what we want, more often we want to be restricted to only choose one of the subtypes in the union and disallow to add properties from the other ones. Sadly, TypeScript does not support these kind of exclusive unions or one-offs out of the box itself. So let's fix this ourselves and let's create the one-off type. Let's get started. So before we start to implement this one-off type, we will fix our problem manually so that we can see how this one-off type will work under the hood when we create it. So we can fix this problem by using the never type. So we go, for example, here to this text message and we add another property. We say here we want to have a URL in there and we make this an optional property and we say the value of this has to be never. Now we can see nothing really changed because we also have to do the vice versa part in the URL message. So we go in there in this URL message type and we want to say this has a text in there, which is also optional and also has a type of never. And now we can see we get an error here on line 12 because it's not allowed to have a text in there when we have already a URL. And when I remove this URL here, we can see this works fine. Why is this? So we say when we have this text property in there, we want to allow an optional URL, which has to be of type never. And because this text here we pass in is not of type never, this will throw an error. I did a video already about the never type in depth, so you can check it in the info box or in the description below. So there you can see exactly how this never type works. So, but in this case, what's important is we say we want it to be of type never, but we are just passing it a string. So this will throw an error at compile time. Now, of course this works, but the problem with this approach is that we would have to do this everywhere. So we would have to say here in the image message, we would have to add a text and a URL property, and we would have to do this for all possible combinations. But we don't want to do this because we can easily forget to add one of these properties, and it's not really fun to do this manually at all. So let's remove this back here and remove these types here, and let's create a little helper type which will do exactly that for us. Let me create a type here and let's call this type only first. Now what this type will do, it will take two generic arguments here, two generic types. And what we now will say is we want to allow everything from the first type, but everything which is in the second type should have the value never. So basically what we did here manually with the URL, we can let TypeScript do automatically. So let's try this. So we say we have this F here because we don't want to change this and we can have an intersection type. And now we create a mapped type. So we say we have our key in there and we say this key is in key of S. So we loop over all the properties of our S here of our second type. And as a value, we make every value optional, but we say it has to have a value of never when it's set. Now this looks like it could work, right? But let's see what happens when we use it for our message object. So we say only first, and we pass it, for example, our text message. And as a second one, we pass our URL message. And now we can see everything is not allowed besides the text. So why is this? Well, let's see what happens here. What we say here is take everything which which is in the first type, but set all the properties which are in the second type to never. And because we have this base message up here, which has an ID and a timestamp, which is in the text message, but also in the URL message, the ID and the timestamp will also be set to never. So this does not work like this. So we have to fix this and we have to say, well, we want to exclude every property which is in F from S. So what we say here is we say omit and we pass as a first argument our second type. And as a second argument, we can pass a union type of all the keys we want to omit from this type. So we can say key of F here. And now we can see that only line 15 does no longer compile, but the other parts are doing fine. Because what we are saying here is take everything from S, which is not in F, and set the value to never. Now you could also do this in different ways, but I like this approach because in my opinion, you can clearly 
clearly see what happens and it's really easy readable. So we can use this only first type to create a simple one-off type. So we have a type here and let's say this is simple one-off and we pass a first and a second. And now what we can do is we just call only first with the first and the second type here. But now we can say we create a union and we say we call only first again, but with the second as first and the first as second. So we switch them and create a new union type with it. So now let's use this here instead of this only first. So we say here simple one off. And now we can see we don't get an error here inside our object, but just at line 13 because this object here is no longer valid. But if I now say I will comment out this text here, we can see this works fine. And also when I remove this URL, this also works fine. So this is a simple way of creating this one-off type which takes two generic types and will create this exclusive union which means that only one of these two are allowed. Now this looks fine and it's all good but the problem is for example in our case here we don't have only two unions we have three or we could have even more so we would need something which could take more than just two elements. So it needs to be able to handle like an array of unions. So let's see how this would have to look like. So let's copy this message here and let's call this instead message types array. Now we wrap this here in an array and instead of these being unions, we just comma separate this type array. Now, how should this final one off type look like? So we want to have this one off here, which takes this message types array. And this then needs to create this exclusive unions, which do not allow to pass in additional properties from other unions. So before we will create this type, we will create another helper type. So why do we need to do this? Well, let me first show you what kind of type we will create. And we will then after that see clearly why we need this. What we will create is like a merge type type which we can pass an array of types and it will then merge all of the properties of these types we pass in together into one large type. So we will create this type here and let's call this type merge types and what we will pass is we will pass a types array and this types array of course has to be an any array type because we want to pass in any types here into this array type and the second element we have to use we need to have a collector where we can store these collected types. Now I did a video about recursion. You can check it in the info box or in the description below. Now what we will do at the start is we will have our result here and we will say this at the start is just an empty object because we don't have any properties in it when we start. Now what we will do is we will recursively loop over our types array and check if there are still elements in this array. And as long as there are elements in there, what we will do is we will take the first element out of this and we'll add it to our result. So let's do this here. So we say first, as long as this types array extends an array type, which contains at least one element, and I like to call this first element head, you can call this anything you like. We will then store the remaining part in this rem type variable here. This just spreads the remaining part of our array into this variable. And as long as this is the case, we will call merge types again. And now we have as the first argument here, our remaining part of our types array we pass in. And the second argument will be our existing result. So the type we already have, but we will use an intersection type and we'll add our head to it. So we'll add all the types from the first element of our types array. Now, as soon as we don't have any more elements in there, we will just return the result we have. Now, let me show you what this will generate when we use it, for example, for the message types array. So let's have our test here and we have our merge types and we pass our message types array here. So let's see what this creates. We can see here, this creates an intersection type of all these types in this array. So we have this base message here, and then we have the text, the URL and the image path all in one type. So why do we need this? Now let's see again how we use this only first here. We passed our first type here, which should be excluded from this check because everything which is in the first type should not be set to never. Now the second type here is used to set everything else to never. And this is exactly why we need this merge types because we will use this merge types to have all the possible properties, all the possible types from our message types array to be set to never, but excluding this first here. But maybe this is a little bit abstract. So let's implement our real one-off type and let me show you how you can use this. So 
let's remove this test here and let's create this one off type. So we create this one off here and this will look similar to the merge types. So what we will say first is we have our types array here and this again extends in any array type. Next, what we have is a result, but this result will not start with an empty object, but it will start with never because when the result does not have any additional properties, we want to return the never type from this to tell the user of this type something went wrong. So we can see here for the merge types, this is sufficient, but in this one off, we need to add another type. So first, before we add it, let's move these generics here to a separate line, because what we will do here is we will create a new generic type. And what I like to call these kind of generics are like local type variables. This is just something I like to call them. So what we will do here is we will say we have an all properties type here. And what is the value of this? We say merge types, and this takes this types array we pass in. Now, why do we need this? So when we first call our one off with our message types array, what we want to do is we want to create a new type by merging all these types in our types array, because we will use this in every iteration to create these never properties. So let me show you how this works. So we will create now the implementation. So we will say as long as this types array still has an element in it, basically like we did with the merge types, we say infer had here, and we will say we save the remaining part in our rem variable. So as long as this shape here is true, we will just call one off again. Now, what do we pass into this? The first parameter, of course, is the remaining array we have. Now, the second one is similar to the merge types. So what we will say is we have our res here, but this is not an intersection type, but a union. So we will create this union here. And now it gets interesting. And maybe you see a similarity to this simple one off we've created on line 22, because what we will do is we will say only first. And now what do we pass into this only first? The first argument here is our head. So the first element we have in our types array and the second element, and now it gets interesting, this will be our all properties. Now, why do we need this? Because in this all properties, all the properties from our message types array, for example, are in there. And when we use this only first, what will happen is everything which is not in head will be set to never. So the only thing which is left now is, of course, we have to pass our all properties as our last argument, because when we would not pass this, the next time we would call this, this all properties would get overwritten by this new types array. And when we recursively call this array again, it will only come contain URL message and image message. So it will not have all the possible properties in there anymore. So we need to pass this initial all properties every time we call our recursive one off type. Now, the last thing we need to do is we just need to return our result as soon as there are no more elements in our types array. And this is already it. We don't have to do anything more. So let's see if this works. Now, what we will do here instead of using this simple one off, we will go up there and we will just wrap this message types array into our one off type. So we say we have our one off and we wrap this here in our type. And now we just use this here in our message. So let's remove this here and let's call just message types array like this. And now we can see nothing changed, of course, because this is valid, but let's now add this URL again. We can see we get an error for our message because we can see here we have the text and the URL in there. So when I add an image path, for example, I also get an error because of course now we have even more of these properties. And when I now remove, for example, the text, we can see I still get an error, but only when I also remove the URL, we can see that the error goes away. So by creating this one off type, we have achieved what is not possible with the normal union types of TypeScript. Because what we now can do with this one off is we can pass in here as many union types as we want, but we can make sure that we can only choose one of these union types and that we don't have the possibility to add additional properties from other unions. So thank you for watching the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And I hope you learned something useful today. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the newest TypeScript stuff. And also let me know in the comments what kind of topics you'd like to have covered in future videos. See you in the next one. Bye.